talk. I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Pyrosin. So, all of the just finished things. watching this trailer for the uh, next Star Wars The Old Republic patch. Holy cow, there's so many new features. Patch some... 1.2. It's finally feeling like an actual there are, MMO. There are so many features, they're literally just throwing up a whole bunch of text on a screen and glossing over them, and it's kind of overwhelming. So, let me read some of these. Um, Unambiguously, the most important one is pink lightsabers. Right, new lightsaber colors will be added, and craftable new lightsaber colors. So those of you who actually took the artifice skill will get to use it for something. Like my Jedi alt! Yay! We'll actually get to use it for something. So, let's see. New vehicles! Craftable augments, yay, for those of you who New crafting schematics, extractable tier 2 mods, ship droids actually gaining a faction... Crystal well, formation. that annoys me because after I got my bounty hunter to level 50, I the first thing I did was grind all of my companions to 1,000 affection. 10,000. But, mm-hmm. yeah, 10,000. But looking through my crew window, it's like everybody's got their bars filled up except for 2VR8 who has an empty bar. Yep. It doesn't match. OCD. Yep, he can now gain affection. Oh, as of this patch. As of, the, yeah, the patch. That's probably released. coming out, what, next week? Uh, or the week after. It's definitely in the works. It will be soon. We don't quite know how soon. Um, reverse engineering will now also give you random a uh, chance for unlocking random schematics. Huh. So more than just the upgraded version of what you've got. Uh, legacy item drops. In other words, items that you can trade between characters. Um, there's also a whole bunch of stuff to do with your legacy, like unlocking classes and making a family tree. Is that with within your own legacy? Is that what you're doing? Or? Yeah, you are going in your own legacy, and you can link characters together to create a family tree. And through doing that, you can actually unlock some rather interesting things. Uh, so not only can you unlock abilities that are like tied between the classes, so the example they give here is a Sith warrior who happens to use the flamethrower of, uh, of the bounty hunter. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I have to take back my proclamation that pink lightsabers is the most important thing. Yeah, because I'm just now seeing that there are companion dances. Yeah, they they also just showed the uh, Imperial agent using the force choke ability. Um, Likewise, legacy species unlocks. Yeah, I think this is really neat. So the example they show here is a Chiss Republic smuggler, which doesn't make any sense, but right. But I guess if it's your legacy. Mm. So I, I have a feeling that if you have a high-level legacy unlocked character, you can unlock that race for other yeah. things. It's just I kind of wanted to I kind of wanted to play all of my characters like as separate things. I didn't want them then to be Then just don't all put them in your end. legacy. Yeah. You don't need to. Well, the thing is they're all part of it because they're on that server. Um I, I don't think you need to put them in the family tree, though. I know, but I'm missing out on those features as a result. Hmm. We'll have to see exactly w- how the unlock works. I'd like to do it, like, say, between, like, separate characters. I'd like to do that. I don't know. I'd like to link Like, separate my... account characters? Uh, I could see my Sith warrior being the brother of uh, Tarsus. Except if they're different species, I... how does that work? One's human and the other is a cyborg. Oh, well, I guess that works. Pixie and I were actually role-playing our two Jedi characters, the low-level ones that we rolled recently as sisters, because we just coincidentally chose the same race and similar body types and stuff. Why not? I did make my Republic smuggler to hopefully play with you guys at some point. Captain Centarsis Redengrave. Oh, you did get Centarsis. I I did rename him. I I figured that made the most more sense than Centarsis. He actually has his full name. (laughs) Because I couldn't get his uh, his preferred abbreviation. Mm-hmm. So, but doing no. family trees across multiple accounts isn't available. No, uh, you, role playing with it other has people to be that on way the server. Work. Oh, it's within that. We're trying to figure out if it's across multiple accounts, like oh, my I, Jedi I don't and think so. Pyro's Jedi, for example. I do not believe so. But we'll have to see. It's like you can you, you can connect them as like spouses and stuff, and I'm like, why would you want to marry yourself? Is kind of like that's a little I'm... weird. Yeah. Also, you have the option of marrying your companion characters in game, which I have to say, a little weird on uh, on the spoiler side. So warning there: the female Sith warrior can marry Quinn before Quinn like backstabs and betrays you. 
So Quinn's effectively like, sorry, wife, I'm a douche. That really blows. Yeah, how awkward does that marriage become after that? Yeah. Because, like, you're going to win that fight. Quinn's not smart enough to send something, like, really adequate to kill you. He sent two freaking droids. It's so, like, really? That's the best you've got? So You so, underestimate so, my power. So my Sith warrior was like, Quinn, you're going to pay for this. That Just that simple. And then I proceeded to throw him up and down the walls of the ship on my way back. Did they show that? I hope they showed oh, yeah. that. Oh yeah, I was like just flinging him into walls as I walked back. I approve. I wish I could have seen that. Right. <laughs> I would have to roll a warrior now. Like, it, it was silly. I have to roll a warrior now to see that. Um, and so, like, I can't imagine how it would be for a female Sith warrior that had married Quinn mm -hmm. at that point. Like, husband, what are you doing? Domestic abuse, domestic abuse. Right. In both well, directions. Att attempt <laughs> attempted someone, homicide. Someone and all call that. the Jedi. Sith don't pay alimony. Anyway, so Guess some what? vanity. They've added vanity pets in there. Yeah, I it's... do love the mini Tauntaun and can't wait for it to freeze to death. <laughs> like, my Sith warrior would get one just under the assumption that, you know, if we take a vacation on Hoth, I'm sleeping in you. Except you wouldn't fit in one that small. Well, you gotta wait until it grows up a bit. Wait, okay. This is saying that you can, uh, one of the legacy bonuses is special emotes. Heck yes. yeah. You gain family I, emotes. Pixie and I were talking the other day that there should totally be unlockable emotes. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, there's a new battlefield coming for PvP, which those of us who PvP will think that's cool. It still needs to be balanced. Um, there's a new operation for those of you who like raids. And new flashpoint. And a new flashpoint for those of you who like, you know, sane numbered uh, groups. Yep. Is we there an option to choose what kind of PvP you're going to do when you queue up? Uh, hopefully that's one of the features that gets added this patch. As of right now, no, there is not. It's, I don't see it on this list. <laughs> <laughs> is it on the list? Is it on the massive word list at the end? Yeah, so the way I'm looking at the family tree thing right now, uh, I have to go wait and get back to it. I'm interested in this is part of the video trailer. Rack and like... featured dungeon. Okay, that's so... Rack Ghoul. You're thinking Mass Effect. That's right. Okay, um, so global unlocks are based on Republic classes, Imperial classes, species, and other. Um, do we have any idea how high the the legacy leveling goes? I know I'm at, like, level 15 on mine right now. I do not know. Yeah, because our characters are... Yeah, I think our level 50s are both at about level 15 legacy. Yeah. I know for a fact, I, I'm, when this thing comes out, I'm going to have uh, my, Jedi, or my Sith Warrior be the highest part of the chain. And I definitely want him to be brothers with uh, Captain Rengrave. Just like that guy. He's a disgrace. Just like my brother. Kind of a douche. <laughs> Both sides will be saying that, actually. <laughs> but, like, I can't... Or, like, you know how my my brother and I both have separate accounts, and we happened to roll very similar characters, and right. it could be believed that our characters were siblings yeah, in game. I, I don't think you can do cross-account family trees. Which would... It's just, bleh. That's a shame. The forums indicate that there is a the level cap for legacy is fifty. Mm. Okay, so wow, that that gets up there. <laughs> you know what I want as the first character perk? I want to make it so that you have sprint available at level one on every Heck character yeah. you make from now on. I am way into that because that walking around at the, the super system. slow speed sucks. Right, like just. Hey, you did this super, this stupid super slow thing once. It's okay. Here's your sprint forever. We don't need to waste your time anymore. Right. We've already wasted your time once. It, it's okay. I, I do agree with you, Pix. I don't quite understand how the cross species family tree works. Yeah, you know, it's like, like human, 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 probably human, chiss. I don't quite get that. Unless every species in the Star Wars universe can just reproduce. 
I know, is that a thing? I, I'm no, not, it's not. I'm not quite a big enough Star Wars nerd to know that. Can Twi'leks reproduce with humans? Uh, well, Twi'leks might be able to. That's a bit of a special case. I'm not sure. Hmm. I, I suppose I could Google this and see what comes up. Hold on, we're gonna do this. Uh, can... Let's see how many characters I have to put in before it actually Be sure to comes turn up. safe search off. And just go ahead and do an image search. It's probably fine. Man, ear cones. What is the deal with ear cones? They're right. freaky. It wouldn't be so bad if Twilight Males had ear cones too. Thank but Twilight Males have human ears. Thank that makes the ear cones super weird. For informing me that in fact <laughs> Twilights and humans cannot. Yep, oh, there it goes. According to Republic Commando True Colors. Wait, but what? then the Clone Wars series had Twilight hi human hybrid children in it. Well, I guess uh, Clone Wars just breaks everything in the Star Wars universe, doesn't it? Probably Clone Wars is a higher tier of canon than Republic Commando True Colors. I think I Karen Travis is so. a big name, but... Do -do -do. I wonder what the official canonicity ratings are. I tend to like going by Wikipedia, uh, yeah, Wikipedia on most cases, but we've got some mad what? contradictions here. Wikipedia just mentions that both depictions exist. Yeah, I I specifically remember like in the romance options with Vet, she she never mentions having kids with you as every single companion in Star Wars: uh, The Old Republic does. Like there is not a romance option in the game where the partner character doesn't mention having kids with you. Vet specifically mentions adopting kids because you cannot play a Twi'lek Sith warrior. That's actually not a thing. Hmm. Your options are human, cyborg, Rotataki, and pureblood Sith. Alright then. That's different. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, the... the the Twi'lek is the only option you have on the Sith side is uh, Sith Inquis uh, Inquisitor. That's the only Twi'lek available. Huh. Otherwise, they're that... all Republic. Race distinctions kind of seem a little arbitrary. Like, I, I suspect that the patches will rapidly make almost every race available to almost every class. The Even way the World of Blood Warcraft Sith? eventually did that. Except, well, yeah, I, I want to have a Pure, if Blood, I could Sith play a pure Blood Sith Jedi Knight. That would be awesome. That would I be would do that so in a heartbeat. Stupid. I would break the game at that point. I just want to be like a, a Pure Blood Sith Republic Trooper. Not even like a Force user. It's like, yeah, you guys pay better. I don't know, it's hard to beat the bounty hunter for pay. Every major mission you do is like, yeah, give me tons of credits. Except, in my experience, that did not really ever impact how many credits you got. Right. Was, there were, there were the very story. rare instances where you got a tiny little bonus, but mostly it did not affect anything. right -o. Yeah, I'm looking at a list and... Yeah, these Sith Inquisitor is the only Sith class that can be a Twi'lek. Because the storyline for it, that you start as a slave is appropriate for that. Mm -hmm. Twi'leks, apparently great slave labor. Alright, so, I'm super excited about this patch. Finally getting to actually do something with my legacy screen. Finally, yeah. finally getting that uber off bl uh, dark blue lightsaber for myself. Mm -hmm. It's okay being blue as long as it's dark blue. I know it's you, you light saber. You can it's get the a name. Well, here's the funny thing: you can get a color and black lightsaber right now in game. Like you get the yellow black for pre-ordering. Mm -hmm. 
you can get a red-black and a blue-black from running instances. That still doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Black light doesn't make sense. That's the, that's the kind of light that makes your socks glow, right? Not quite. Huh. And that haunted house was lying to me. They had black lights, and all of my clothing was glowing. Nope, those weren't a thing. Not real. But yeah. I'm... Okay, see, I, uh, I immediately went right into the gutter and assumed that you were talking about something else entirely. Mm-hmm. As to why your socks were glowing. Let's just steer gently away from that. <laughs> I've, I've found the official canonicity ratings, and the Clone Wars cartoon is T-canon, which trumps C-canon. So, okay. uh, according well, to the priority totally rules, able to reproduce. totally just able to make. apparently mate. doesn't want to give birth. But what but about... Then. Yeah, but what about the others, like Zabrak and... Uh, the mirror line. I guess I'll look this up. Yeah, like Zabrak, pointy heads. That seems painful. Can Zabrak reproduce with humans? Um, it seems better. unlikely. I would not. I would not bet so. Can really? Yep. This is definitive. What's What's the on... source on that? The Jedi Council forums. It says if they can. Oh, nope. Yeah, this, is a, hypo- this is a hypothetical thread. The Zabrax were capable of breeding with we humans know, in a hybrid that, subspecies. I, this is the nerdiest nerd talk we have ever done by a long shot, by the way. Shut up, Pyro's talking. <laughs> there, is, there is a whole species that is Zabr- Zabrak human hybrids called the Dathomiri. Alright then. And well, they show up in T-Canon, including the Clone Wars the cartoon. Sith uh, purebloods can reproduce with pretty much anything. Because they're Apparently already Apparently the hybrid. Clone Wars cartoon was super into having interspecies hybrids. Apparently. Let's see. But then wouldn't you end up with that hybrid species and not just one of those others? I you guess. see what I'm saying? It still wouldn't make sense in your legacy tree. So your family tree, it can work. Well, your family tree is still going to be messed up because, once again, it, it, you, it, two humans can't make a Zabrak. Maybe is what we're I'm assuming saying. adoption. I searched Chiss, and I keep getting results that link to Chris. <laughs> I don't care if Chris can reproduce also, with humans. <laughs> also, I'm looking at. Wait, the third link is about Mitt Romney's dilemma in picking a running mate. <laughs> <laughs> The first entry is uh, on half breeds in the Harry Potter wiki. Well, I think Wikipedia just exploded. <laughs> uh, no, Google just exploded. The second link is on eugenics. This is awesome. And then I've got a Chihuahua <laughs> FAQ. Five links down. Because of Chris. I, I don't care if Chris can reproduce with humans. I assume everyone named Chris just can't. <laughs> Man, the show just got really weird. Uh, started off uber dorky and then we just got weird. <laughs> you know, like most of our Wednesday so nights. That's, that's the old Republic legacy system. I guess we can move on then, because we've got some League to talk really? about. Really? You're going to talk about League? You're going to talk about League? We're saving that. We'll get there. It'll happen. No, fuck you. Mass Effect comes first. <laughs> Mass Effect 3. All right. <laughs> I love you, Pyro. That was so the we've best only played. Dude, I, I played like I thirty seconds of it. Have only played like about an hour of it, but I have a couple of things to say. I've already but played first way of all, both of you. <laughs> my complaint from the demo about none of the soldiers being professional whatsoever continues to exist because the only person who has referred to me as sir so far is a reporter. And all of my subordinate soldiers have been insubordinate, like, all the time. I give them orders, and they're like, no. And I'm like, you're a lieutenant, I'm a commander. That's not how this works. (laughs) The the military kind of did get blown up at the start of the game. That doesn't change the chain of command. Like, the Turians are much better about this. Yeah, because their high command is still Your lack of professionalism is failing to save millions of lives, because... The efficiency of this unit determines whether the entire galaxy will survive. 
Yeah. Well, be professional, I dudes. I, I still object to getting called sir when I'm clearly a lady, but that happens in most of my games, and not just Mass Effect 3. To be fair, That's my a... shepherd kind of slept with his highest ranking subordinate, so uh, I guess I can't talk professionalism. Yeah, my, my shepherd has not done any of the courtship options because she's just too professional. She's always been working on the stuff that matters. She hasn't been distracted with sex. She's I don't just... know, man. That Garrus. That Garrus is well, so Well, that adorable. Garrus. True. <gasps> Not a member of the military. No. And yet more professional than, you know, Ashley, uh, any of my soldier subordinates. <laughs> this sucks that I can't talk about anything because you two haven't played far enough. <laughs> right. I... That'll all be next week. Our, our coverage is limited this week. Yeah, any, this is just a first look. A, anyone who saw my uh, my last Facebook post will know that the day Mass Effect two or Mass Effect yeah two Mass Effect three came out, my three hundred and sixty was just like, nope, done. And so now you're borrowing brands. Yeah, now I have a Transformers three hundred and sixty <laughs> sitting with my stuff. I'm actually thinking about removing that faceplate and taking the one from my system and putting it on that one. Just so you won't be ashamed of yourself while you're playing. Mostly just so that I don't have to explain to people who come over that, no, I don't like the Transformers. Because who's going to ask? Anyone who walks through that door will look how at many, that how system and How many people do go, you have come over? You are not that popular. I hate to break that to you. I got visitors a couple nights a week. Yes, but they're us, basically. So, us in the you, Doug, crew. I heard you like Transformers. You are wrong. Also, I brought these mudkips. <laughs> Dude, if, if like a little herd of mudkips walked through my front door, I don't know what I'd say. I think I'd just look at them and go, Pokemon! Kill something! I, I think your your big problem with that would at that point be them judging you for having a Transformers faceplate on your Xbox 360, because clearly having all of these systems and playing games on them, the, the that's that not the, dorky. The laws of the universe just shattered. There is an Axe graphic novel. Yes, it like, has been advertised on the PS3 for, like, weeks. I'm not sure how that's a thing. I'm kind of ashamed that it exists as a human. Like, Axe the Body Spray has a graphic novel. How is that yep. a thing? That is indeed a thing. You can't... I, I'm sorry, I must have heard you wrong. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> nope. That's that's exactly what I was conveying. That is exactly what I was being. That was does what not was being compute. Mm -hmm. Four hundred four. Pyrosim not found. <laughs> He's gone now. We broke the pyro. I was playing League the other day, and I I had a record of four zero four, and I was like, heh, that's a, that's an HTTP status code. I've been kind of afraid to play League Nerd. the last few days because my computer has been overheating and will just randomly turn off during a match. And I'm almost terrified to come back and find my, like, teammates cursing my name. I think I actually... You got banned on the standard. tribunal. I think it's I not actually even a did... league match if one person isn't disconnected the whole time. So as long as I'm fulfilling that role and coming back within three minutes, it's better than the, uh... Than other situations that could occur. Well, you went out and bought a fan. It's just whether or not you can put it on yeah, I'm, by yourself. I'm going to wait on that. I'm not quite that tech savvy to install my own computer fan. So, All right, then. Okay, I guess you can do your League stuff now. <laughs> We're already done with Mass Effect. Dude, I, I we can't really talk okay, about anything because I, I don't want to spoil you two. I, I am super excited. I could just start yelling spoilers, but that would be kind of a... Probably shouldn't. I, I'm super excited about Mass Effect 3. We are going to talk the hell out of it next week. With I that also event. have this super spiffy, like, hardcover collector's edition You should totally guide. talk about the spoilers that came with your, uh... My collector's edition? Yeah, just talk about it. Don't don't spoil anything, because I don't feel like putting a tag on this cast. Um, well, I bought the collector's edition, which comes with this, the nice, like, little tin, and... Actually, it's in my bag here. So it comes with a nice little tin that's got Male Shepherd on one side and Fem Shep on the other. Because nice. EA has acknowledged that people actually play Fem Shep. And so, it's a pretty nice case. And then it also comes with this other box here that's got some more art. And it comes with a tiny little copy of Mass Effect Invasion number one, despite the fact that I already have all those comics. A little lithograph of the Normandy, and... I, I do like the, the Normandy lithograph. 
It's a postcard. Aw, oh, not a postcard. No, it's Darn. just postcard size. It's just a little picture of the normal. And then there's just an Art of Mass Effect 3 book. Yep, put that away. I don't want to see it. And most of it's okay. I'm going to look in this direction. Like, look, this is Ashley. That is, in fact, new Ashley. Oh, look, there's her multiple to, hairstyles. Compared to old Ashley. And She's still a space racist. Is she? I don't know. I don't know. I killed her. I'm assuming that's not a... Th so wait, did they redesign Caden at all? Like, appropriately? Jack. Sweet. But they didn't... He's actually just, like, super low poly. Like, he, he hasn't <laughs> yeah, even been we didn't upgraded. Even update his There's character. the kid from that demo. He has low resolution textures. So much screen time. We didn't update this guy because we assumed that most people killed him. In fact, we're going to change your story if you didn't. Right about there. Oh. That page I wish I hadn't seen. Uh, but yeah, some of the, the, a lot of it's like really neat stuff in on the art direction and like concept art for the characters and how they changed before like being actually official in the game. And there's like stuff like, you know, the ships and the, like the weapons and how those places ships. got designed. And that's cool. But there's like one or two pages in here that are incredibly spoilery. <laughs> right. I totally so would have killed Ashley instead of Kaiden, except for the fact that I'd had Ashley in my crew and I I had all my good gear on her. But because I'd been using her because she was the first one you get, I'm like, well, it'd be a hassle to re-equip Kaiden and upgrade his no, Kaden. skills. His name is Kaiden. Oh, hey, there's a little N7 patch in here, too. Sweet. That I didn't even notice. Pass that before. to a jacket or something. Velcro. Sweet. I assume we can figure that out here at Nerd Talk. We can figure out Velcro? I would hope so. No, seriously, where is it? <laughs> oh, I would see it in my little pile here. So, yeah. There, there's going to be so much Mass Effect 3. Yeah, we're, we're going to be doing that a lot. I, I've officially confirmed that I... My save is up and running, and I have exactly what I want. So I will be able to actually play the game. How did you transfer your save from your dead Xbox? I removed the hard drive and plugged it into the new one. That would do it. Right. Yeah, I mean, and, it's all just saved on the And HD. I found out, this made Veronica, or Pixie, laugh really, really hard. <laughs> well, it's a good thing we're editing this. Right. So, I found out that my Xbox account was created so long ago that the email that is attached to it is AOL. Wow, that is terrifying. Right. That is how long ago my Xbox Live account was actually created. Pix must have laughed for like that. five minutes about that. I pulled up a video on... I've, I've been watching videos on Dorkly lately, which is kind of like the college humor about video games. My Weird. sister recently changed her one of her ringtones to the Mario Party... Co or the Super Mario coin noise, and all the Dorkly videos have that at the end of the video. And right. for some reason, whenever I hear the coin noise, I'm like, a Dorkly video? I've only ever watched, like, two or three, but... No, they're, they're actually... Uh, most of them are pretty hilarious. That one's just kind of disturbing. Uh, we just watched Charizard's Revenge, where Charizard finally realizes he doesn't have to put up with what the 11-year-old tells him. Because, you know, he's a dragon. So, yeah, I guess uh, since we haven't played too much Mass Effect 3, we can move on to League of Legends. Where we have had a recent champ release. I always love doing these. New champion. Yep, because every couple weeks we get one of those while we approach the fine champion number 100. Who I imagine is just going to be the number 100 anthropomorphized running around the field. That'd be pretty awesome. He'll what kind of skills would the number 100 have? His... It, the number 100's ult would be, like, divide by two, and then it splits into two number 50's that you can it, control independently. It divides by zero and ends the game. <laughs> it just crashes everybody's clients. Right. And then they come back and find that the number 100 has soloed all of their towers and then their nexus. That's pretty powerful. But no, our champion for today is Fiora, the Grand Duelist. We actually owe an apology. 
That's because right. Because her... We, we owe a fictional character an apology. Here, we assumed dog, that we one assumed... of her jokes was sexual, but it yeah. actually isn't. At, at this point, we We were just ass- looking for the dick jokes. We really were. Uh, af- really, after the vein outfit... We were kind of expecting it that everyone is some kind of sexual innuendo or pun if you are a female character in this game. I mean, look at that vain Valentine's Day skin. Just look at it. it. Not even in character. And so we had assumed that Fiora's line, uh, I'm an artist with a sword in more ways than one, was referring to, you know, a, a phallic joke. Which, which didn't make any kind sense. kind of is confusing because... She would not be the artist because she shouldn't have a sword being a right. female. Right, so that that was the confusing bit. Turns out, watching the entire animation for her joke, where she says this, she actually draws a picture of Timo using her sword. So she's being a literal artist in that sense. And so, no, Fiora actually remains a character that, besides the skin tightness of her outfit, is non-sexualized. Very cool. That's yeah. saying she's still wearing a completely skin-tight leather outfit. And also, we know that Bunny Riven is coming. Still hasn't been confirmed, we're just assuming. So it's like her, Riven, and Karma. The three characters that do not feature revealing outfits. So Fiora, yeah, the Grand Duelist. Yep, I, I guess we can talk about her moves, because we've actually used these in-game. Um, her Q, which is the move that you're going to want to learn first, and then forget about for the rest of the game, and max it absolutely last, is called Lunge. Basically, it is a free flash that does damage upon arrival. I thought you said lunch, and I was really confused. Lunch! She makes a sandwich. <laughs> that is one of the abilities of the Team Fortress 2 Heavy. Right. Just pull out a sandwich and eat it. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. It no longer restores bullets. Can we tell that I'm hungry? (laughs) Nice. Um, So yeah, Fiora dives forward, and upon arriving at her clicked target, will do damage to them. She can use this ability again in a short time, which is actually like between three and five seconds, which is a pretty decent amount. So you can use this ability, dive on someone, hit them once or twice to basically activate her passive, and then dive onto another target to avoid being attacked back. Pretty sweet move. The only reason you don't max it first is because her other abilities are just so good. Such as? Uh, Her W is called Repost. It has a passive where it increases Fiora's damage, uh, starting at 15 and then going up by 5 until it eventually caps out at 35. And when you trigger its active ability, she'll gain a shield for several seconds. If an enemy hits her with a basic attack during that time, not only will she take zero damage, because a little uh, tag comes up that says parried, but she will then reflect magic damage onto the enemy. Uh, That scales on AP. It's actually her only AP move, which is why a lot of people will not be relying on the sun uh, for this for damage. You just use it to prevent yourself from taking hits. It's very powerful if you trigger it to prevent an on-hit ability. So, for instance, if Garen is running at you, getting ready to silence you, trigger your repost, and when he hits you, he will do nothing. Same goes for Nasus. Anyone who's got one of those on-next-hit abilities is just weak against Fiora. Uh, So to continue, her E, which is actually the move you will max first, is probably one of the best steroid moves in the game. Uh, So basically the idea of the move is that upon triggering this, you gain a hideous amount of attack speed. Like, just ridiculous amounts. I think it starts at 60%. Mm -hmm. And every time you hit an enemy, you gain 15% movement speed increase up to a cap of three times. So not only are you moving in, hitting the enemy faster while you're there, you can then run away faster than any enemy could hope to chase you. It's actually a really sweet move, and once it's maxed out, you will just hit things incredibly fast. Um, Really, an opponent would have to be, like, full stacking to even try to match your attack speed. 
And between this and the modest amount of attack speed you'll be building on her to begin with, Fiora should actually be one of the few characters who can hit the 2.5 uh, attacks per second cap on attack speed. And finally, we have the move that everyone has been complaining about, whether for or against it. Her alt. Wait, how do you complain for something? I'll, I'll get to it. Okay. So her alt basically has her uh, go untargetable and leap around an area a lot like Master Yi's uh, blade Q. dance move. Yeah, his Q. Where she becomes untargetable, she leaps around for a couple seconds. Uh, the difference between this move and Yi's is that this can actually hit the same target multiple times. It just does less damage. So if you, say, pop this move while there's only two people available, she'll do the maximum number of hits, exchanging between the two targets. She will finally end her move standing next to the first target you clicked wherever they ended up. But uh, during that time, she's completely untargetable. She is moving incredibly fast, and she's doing a ton of damage. The reason people are complaining uh, against this move is because... On a stacked Fiora, it's almost impossible for a carry to live through this move. She hmm. does just a ton of damage. The reason people are who like Fiora are complaining about it is because while she is untargetable, she's still technically there. When Fiora appears standing next to an enemy, if there's a move around that enemy... Like an AoE? Yeah. She can still be hit by it. So, for instance, if I'm playing as Victor, and I know that she's going to be targeting me with this move, I'll drop my shield on myself. And then when she jumps in to attack me, she'll be frozen. Or, I could drop my ultimate on myself, and silence her, and she'll be pulled out of it. Uh, Cho'Gath could just drop his spikes on himself, and then if she appears next to him, she'll get knocked into the air and knocked out of her ultimate. Honestly, this feels like working as intended. That, yeah, your character's good, but if a person knows how to beat her, you're going to beat her. Just my right. thought, really. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people who like Fiora are complaining that, eh, it's too easy to knock me out of my ultimate. Great, other teams have CC. Don't use it until they've used their moves. Uh, Seems like a thorn mail when come up with strategies to deal with you. Right. It So, she doesn't really feel like a game-breaking character. She's good, by all means, and it's nice to see a female melee carry. Because, you know, we, we don't have many of those. Really. Yeah, it was basically all like... The, the fully dedicated carries are like Olaf, Trindamir... I can't think of many melee carries. Because that's not usually a thing. Usually it's the ranged characters that are the carries. Because they're easier. Mm -hmm. But, like, it, I like having Fiora in the game. I think she's neat. In the hands He's of, been looking forward to her for a long time. Yeah. In the hands of a good player, she's crazy. Mm -hmm. She will just tear people apart. I don't think the bots know how to deal with her yet. Because I've had a couple of them be like, Yep, one CC. The robots will learn. One CC and I should win this. Nope, live through it. You're dead. I specifically played a game the other day where the Malzahar bot kept targeting me with his ultimate, and eventually I just started living through it. And so he'd do that, and then just stand there while I walked into him and proceeded to take him down. So, Sen, can I drag us back into Mass Effect 3 territory for a brief moment? We got a couple minutes, so yeah. Um, Mass Effect 3 involves this thing. See, because... It makes certain negative assumptions about your character if you don't import a Mass Effect 1 or 2 Yeah, safe. we should talk about those. Like, you should open your book and we should go over the list, because Mass Effect... That was only going to be a spring pad for the other point of conversation that was going to take us down, but okay. Okay, I just think we should talk about these. So why don't you talk about what you wanted to first, and then we can discuss, like, the, the assumed So it makes path. certain assumptions, which we'll get to in a second, um, the way... Uh, and most of them are negative, basically. It's you. you have to work at it by playing the other games in order to get the good ending, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of like, I guess, their way of rewarding their loyal fan base. Yeah. And part of the way you can counteract this is by playing the multiplayer 
the cooperative multiplayer online to help boost your um, war resources that way. Interesting. So you and I are both playing on 360. We could totally play together. Okay, that was my whole point there. Sweet. We will boost our war. Anyway. I, but I, I I, was going to say... Uh, Pyro, I think, had a... Okay, say go first. ahead, Pyro. Yeah, I was impressed by the level of detail it presented when I was importing my earlier save, because it had a list of about 10 to 15 things that were the specific details of my choices. And that's nowhere near the full list. Um, I've heard interviews with the creators that have said, yeah, there are over a thousand variables that Mass Effect 3 checks between the two games when you go into uh, importing a save. I'm kind of impressed by just how much detail has gone into this series as far as the flexible narrative. But, that said, there are some assumptions that the game makes if you haven't imported a save, which paints the universe as a very bleak place and makes me wonder just what the heck this Commander Shepard was doing with his or her time. So, let's go over the list. Pix, you want to start it off for us? Uh, should we start with Mass Effect 1? It's a shorter list. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh... This list describes the starting parameters if you've never played Mass Effect 1 or you're importing a game save without Mass Effect 1 data. Okay, so you recruited Garrison Rex. The colony on Ferris was not saved. Shiala, the Asari taken by the Thorian on Ferris, was killed. Okay, I guess we're spoiling Mass Effect 1 and 2 by doing this. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> Those games have been out for, like... Years. Yeah. Uh, the Rachni Queen on Novaria was killed. Rex died on Vermeer, killed by Shepard. Udina was named Counselor. Shepard did not have any romance. The council died and the Destiny Ascension was destroyed. And then, of course, all DLC, the assumption is that you didn't see the content or complete those optional plots. Right. Okay, so the next list describes the starting parameters if you've never played Mass Effect 2 or you're importing a game save without Mass Effect 2 data. Okay, so it's got a lot of sub-lists here. Shepard is assumed to not have completed any loyalty missions. Which were the big part of Mass Effect 2. And so, Shepard didn't do Mordens, and never had the chance to save or destroy the Genophage cure data. Tali was exiled by her people. Zaid and Kasumi were never recruited, because they're DLC. Um, Morden's alive, Garrus is alive, Miranda and Jacob are alive. Uh, Tali was recruited and is alive, but never romanced. Um, is it even possible to <clears throat> save that many people without doing loyalty missions? Yeah, no, but... it is not, actually. Probably not, but the, for the purpose of giving you somebody to interact with in the game, I guess. In order for a person to have lived through the suicide mission, they need to have trusted you. Yeah. Well, this is a female exile, female handmaiden scenario. Or female yeah. exile and handmaiden scenario. Yeah, basically. Yep. Uh, nobody who hasn't played KOTOR 2 will understand that at all. <laughs> uh, Grunt was never woken up from the tank and is never mentioned. Grunt doesn't exist. Uh, Jack died. Samara was never recruited. She fought her way off Ilium and was later killed by Morinth. Thane died during the suicide mission. Legion was never reactivated. Does not have the name Legion as a result. Uh, Shepard destroyed the collector base rather than turning it over to Cerberus. The only Normandy crew members who survived the suicide mission were Joker and Chakwas. Yeoman Chambers, Ken, Gabby, and all other Mass Effect 2 non-squad crew would be dead. Uh, Shepard didn't complete any of the optional N7 missions or special assignments on the Citadel. Um, Shepard didn't complete Arrival, Overlord, or Lair of the Shadow Broker DLC, but the events of Arrival and Shadow Broker still took place off-screen. So the Batarian system was still destroyed, Liara is still the Shadow Broker. So all of those things describes the default conditions to any new Mass Effect 3 player. This would make me not want to play Mass Effect 3 from scratch, because that universe is terrible. Yeah, if you, if you like, accidentally lost your save or something, like your hard drive died... Uh, you you need to go feel back and real, it. real bad about that. Right. It, it's, it almost isn't worth playing Mass Effect 3 if you don't have a Mass Effect 2 save. I assume that there are downloadable Mass, Mass Effect 2 saves. You can get them from, like, a repository. I I'm sure that so. exists. I'm gonna look for it. But yeah, that that's pretty awful. But yeah, you this universe is just bad. You screwed up the suicide mission so terribly. Mm -hmm. MassEffectSaves.com 
for well, downloading think, Mass Effect saves. That's a thing. I guess. Okay. Oh, that That is much better than having played both games and then losing your save because a hard drive died and then giving up also, on Also, I Effect think 3. like Xbox Live Gold members have a thing where you can save to the cloud for your games. So, mm-hmm. Actually, Yeah, Origin has that too. But it was not enabled by default, but it's just for yeah, Mass Well, you Effect need to have 3. an Xbox Live Gold membership in order to use that on your Xbox, but... Uh-huh. So, yeah, next week we will totally be discussing Mass Effect 3. And only Mass Effect 3. I don't really? Know. You're not going to veer off into League again? Uh, well, uh, I wanted to say one more thing about Fiora. Games. Okay, go ahead. Is that the way... Because she does a ton of damage, but doesn't have a ton of health, I think the way I build my Garen, uh, with, if I had like a thorn mail and a sunfire cape, I could stand there and not do any attacks, and I build, I build Garrus as having a ton of health and armor. Garen. Nope, Garrus is now in League of Legends, and it's awesome. Fiora would very likely kill herself attacking me before she could kill me. I, um, I could just stand there, and she would die attacking me. It, it's pretty much a, con- a confirmed that if you build a Thornmail, you can stand there on certain characters and just watch Fiora explode as she attacks you. That That is if, an amusing thing to imagine. If, if you're playing a dedicated tank and build a Thornmail, Fiora will hit you and then take 30% of the damage that she's causing. So as long as you have six... Uh, actually, over... 4.5k health. 30% of the damage before armor. So you don't even need 4... I I usually have 4.5k health, but... Yeah. If you have a ton of armor, you need even less than that. Yup. So, not OP, but powerful. I want to kill a Malhazar that way, too. I've, (laughs) I've been... Ruthlessly burned by Malhazar one-shotting me with his ult. Uh, does not work on spell damage. It's only physical damage. Yeah, so is, is there no equivalent? Is there nothing no. that reflects spell damage? Nope. There is no reflecting of spell damage. There, are, There's plenty of magic resist, but that is the only item I know of that reflects the damage that is done to you. Okay. All right, so next week you you can expect a full discussion of Mass Effect Three, complete with gonna... spoiltastic. Yeah, yes. I was gonna ask that. But as for now, this has been nerd talk for this fine Wednesday. March seventh, two thousand twelve. I remember the date. Good job. Would you like a cookie? I can buy one later. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen, and I'm Pyrosim, and we'll catch you next week on Nerd Talk. <laughs>